In this video, I'm going to demonstrate evaluating a transfer pricing system using exercise 1525 as an example. So we have a scenario where a company has two divisions. Currently, one of the divisions, Southwest, offers its product to outside markets for a sales price of $30 per unit. It does incur variable costs per unit, $11 per unit. Fixed cost overall in total, not per unit, is $37,500 per month based on a monthly production of 4,000 units. The other division, Northeast, can acquire the same product that it needs uh, from an alternate supplier at $31 per unit, or it can acquire the product from Southwest Division for a transfer price, established transfer price of $30 per unit, plus $2 per unit in transportation costs. And I want to note the $2 per unit in transportation costs isn't paid to Southwest Division. Apparently, they're not local to each other. It's paid to an independent carrier. So we want to look at what are the costs and benefits under different scenarios of transferring internally versus Northeast Division buying it externally. So I, I will say in Part A, you may think I, I definitely am going the long route, but it'll make sense once I get to Part B. So bear with me. You're probably going to be able to do a shortcut on this. So we first look at A and say, what a Southwest division can market all the product it can produce. So ultimately, if it's doing a transfer with a Northeast division, it's losing out of an external sale. So let's look internally. Let's make an assumption that we do decide to transfer internally from Northeast to Southwest. And I set this up with saying, what is... Northeast going to pay if Southwest is transferring the part to them. Well, they're going to pay $32 total. I realize they're not paying all $32 to Southwest, but the $30 plus the $2 in transportation. What is Southwest receiving? They're only receiving $30 because two is going to be paid to the independent carrier. But on the other hand, what are they incrementally paying themselves to produce that unit? $11 in variable costs. Why are we not including the fixed cost on some type of per unit basis because the fixed cost is going to be there irrespective of whether there's a transfer internal or not. You can consider it to be a sunk cost at that particular point. Then I want to net these out and understand the overall net for the company. Well, if Northeast is paying 32, that's to a negative, but Southwest is receiving 30, that's an overall payment of $2. And recall that that's, I mean, the $30 nets out from one to another, but the $2 is the transportation cost. In addition to that, the payment out is the variable cost of $11. So the net overall cost of transferring internally, if there's an overall market for overall production, is $13. Compare that to if Southwest decides, no, I'm not going to do business with you, Northeast, and Northeast has to buy the part externally. So Northeast would pay $31 to an alternate supplier. And you may ask, well, why do you have numbers under Southwest? Keep in mind, we're saying that Southwest can market its product to somebody else. So when it markets its product to somebody else, it's still going to receive the $30. It doesn't matter like whether it transferred internally or it sold to somebody else. It's got the business. It's going to receive $30 but pay out the $11 in variable costs. What's to that to the company? Well, South Northeast is paying $31 to an alternate supplier, but Southwest is getting $30 from somebody else because it's not transferring internally, so the net payment to the company is a dollar. There's still the $11 in variable costs for the Southwest division to produce that unit it sells externally. So the overall cost to the company when in this scenario that Southwest is selling externally is $12. So that's a dollar difference, and so it's a net benefit for Southwest to sell externally um, to someone else and not transfer to Northeast Division. Now, you could have simplified this and said, well, you know, I, I can look. It's a $31 cost to buy from somebody else, uh, $32 uh, to buy internally. That's a dollar difference there, so you could have shortcutted that. Again, this will make sense when we get to Part B. What, though, if Southwest Division has idle capacity? That means they aren't turning away business um, if they take on Northeast business. Well, if they still, if they do transfer internally, all the same numbers carry over from A to B. Nothing changes there. The overall payment for the company overall is $13 because we have the transportation cost plus the variable cost, incremental cost to produce the unit. But what does change is if 
there is idle capacity, but Southwest or Southwest decides I'm not going to sell to you, and Northeast has to go to somebody else. Northeast is paying the alternate supplier thirty-one dollars, but Southwest is losing out. They're not gaining anything um, overall from anybody else. So the overall payment for the company is thirty-one dollars. Again, we're not compensating uh, with business from somebody else. So the net difference here is an eighteen dollar difference. 31 minus 13, and this is an $18 difference to the benefit of transferring internally. So obviously, depending upon whether uh, Southwest can market all its product or has idle capacity, is definitely changing the answers here.